I just realized that this microphone was not on, so now the sound quality is going to be better. Uh, but the sound quality is going to suck for the whole beginning of this video, so sorry. Hey, everybody, welcome back. If there's one thing I know how to do in the world of comic books, apparently, it's disappear. But let's forget about all the channel stuff. Today we're talking about the most important character in independent comics publishing history, depending on who you ask. And if the person you ask is Todd McFarlane, then he's gonna say that this character is the most important character of all time for any reason. Of course, we're talking about the one and only Al Simmons Spawn, the character created by Todd McFarlane, and the longest running creator-owned independent comic book of all time. You know, that's an interesting record that it holds. Um, it also, the first issue holds a record for the most copies sold of a single issue created by a single creator, which broke a record previously held by Todd as well uh, with Spider-Man 1. And I know, you know, before we get into all of the, the stuff and what I like about Spawn, um, I kind of give the preface that like, I, I, I'm just, I kind of am just on the bandwagon with Spawn. I don't think the writing is good. I, I've never really thought that, but to me, that's not the appeal. The appeal is the artwork. And uh, there's some very fun little tidbits and pieces of Spawn history that we're going to get into today, hopefully. And I would love to just jump right in with a pickup I made today. Not the day you're watching this, but the day that I shot this video. I've covered the price with a Sharpie because, you know, people on the internet love to tell you you overpaid or underpaid and talk about the price of things. And especially with something like Spawn that is debatably just a bunch of schlock and uh, comic book porn for the lower class of comic collectors. I don't believe those things, but you hear it a lot online. I felt it was best to not let you know how much I spent. But anyway, this is, uh, this is a book that I had on the wish list for a little while. Let's get it out of the out of the sleeve here and we'll take a look. On the back, you've got some fantastic stuff. Uh, this is all the toys we were being made by McFarlane uh, at the time. The time being 1994, that um, you can get covers with a couple of the rest of these, Medieval Spawn, etc., etc. You see people use this a lot as a display piece, this issue. Uh, here, I have the action figure that is uh, the original design of Spawn. This came in a two-pack with a Todd McFarlane action figure, but I'm not sycophantic enough to take that action figure out and show it to you. Um, we'll just enjoy this as a little bit of set dressing and this here, which is the miniature sketchbook drawing <laughs> that goes with the Todd action figure. Anyway, let's open it up, take a little bit of a look. So because this is from 1994, this is actually before McFarlane Toys was called McFarlane Toys. And at the top here you can see it says Todd Toys, Promises and Lies. And it's just a really fascinating piece of Spawn history. Um, you see a lot of names in here that really are not a part of the character story anymore, but are very interesting and uh, historic to Spawn and who he is now. So very cool. Also, the artwork is not done by Todd, which I think is one of the most interesting things about this book, um, that most of the time in the early days of Spawn, every single piece of art was created by Todd himself. He was drawing the character every time. But uh, this is one of the first times, or maybe the first time, I don't know offhand, that another creator uh, actually gets to take the, the reins on the book and write and draw it. So I like it. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, it's very, very short. It's like 15 pages or less. But uh, yeah, I think this is a, to me, this is a very exciting piece of the collection. Keeping it moving here. Uh, this is Spawn Batman. Now, if you know anything about me, you know I'm a big Frank Miller fan. It's kind of my whole thing. I'm not the most hardcore Frank Miller fan. I don't know everything about him, but I did meet him last year. He gave me a compliment. We had a really nice conversation about Mobius, the artist who had done Silver Surfer, and obviously a bunch of other legendary work, but that was what we talked about with Silver Surfer. And uh, it's just somebody whose work I've always really gravitated to. He has an art style that I think is just so visionary and interesting. So uh, imagine my just joy as a younger comic creator to discover that Todd McFarlane and Frank Miller had worked on something together and it was something that brought together two characters I really liked. This is Spawn Batman, signed by Frank Miller. If you're gonna meet Frank Miller and you have this book, I mean, you gotta have him sign it, right? I've never met Todd. I've, I've uh, digitally met him once over a, a Discord call in his kind of fan community, but uh, this is the only book that I've had signed by one of the creators of this, and eventually, hopefully, one day I'll meet Todd and I'll be able to have him sign this book as well. So, I like Spawn Batman, um, which kind of segues into this next bit here. This, this is the stack of the other Batman Spawn crossovers. <laughs> so, uh, this is War Devil. This is the one that sucks. This is the one that is barely worth reading. Um, but it is interesting because the deal that originated the Batman Spawn crossover allowed both Image Comics and DC to create their own stories with both characters. And so you had them going in pretty direct competition creatively 
um, in order to sell both books. So this is War Devil. The one that I just showed that Frank Miller signed is uh, the the other, you know, Spawn Batman. Uh, the funniest thing to me is that they switched the names. So the DC book is Batman Spawn and the Image book is Spawn Batman. I've always thought that's a hilarious way to identify them, especially when the DC book then printed the title on the front of the book. It prints War Devil right there. So I've always thought that was really silly, but funny. And then the rest of these in this stack are all the 2022, I believe, or 2023, 2022, I don't remember, whatever, um, Batman Spawn crossover. When this came out, I bought a whole bunch of copies. Uh, this is the McFarlane cover, or one of the McFarlane covers he did, he did a whole bunch. Uh, this is the Capullo cover, the first Capullo cover. I think the other one is in here as well. Let me get that. Yeah, these are the kind of complimentary Capullo covers. Oops, stack is coming out of order here. These are the complimentary Greg Capullo covers. Um, I like them, I think they're sick. I never bought the, they, they did what, I, they called it like the acoustic version or something, this really weird name for it, but they did a, a textless black and white version of this. I have always wanted to pick it up, but I, I've never made the jump because to me, um, it, it seemed cool to get, but I just, I was over the, the hype of these that I bought when they came out. And so I never, never picked it up. But if I see a copy for cheap somewhere, I'm sure I'll pick it up. And then, uh, yeah, this incredible cover as well. I don't remember the artist on this offhand, the signature's right there, but I can't read it. But I do love this cover a lot. I think it's really, really cool. I love Virgin Variants, uh, especially on big event books like this. Um, and like I said at the beginning of this video, like the writing on Spawn is, is terrible. No one's saying the writing is what brings you to this book. And certainly in my case, that is not what brings me to the book, but uh, I do love Virgin Variant covers and I like the art on that a lot. And we're gonna get to one of those that I really like in a minute. And then this, of course, I think this is the best Batman Spawn uh, crossover cover we've ever gotten. This is Jim Lee's. I was in Samurai Comics in Phoenix, Arizona when this book was in pre-order. And I saw that Jim Lee was gonna do a cover and I said, you know, ship me a copy. I don't care what it looks like. They hadn't revealed what the cover was. And I was like, well, it's Jim Lee. You know, it's going to be incredible. And I was right. It is incredible. It's uh, definitely my favorite Batman Spawn crossover cover. Um, I want to grab an action figure real quick to show you something about Batman Spawn. So I have labored uh, for many years to find the right action figure for each character uh, that I really, really like. And I, I am very hesitant to get two action figures of the same character. It's just not something I'm usually interested in. To me, most of the time, there's a pretty definitive figure for each character. There's, there's one that sticks out to me most of the time, if I can find a, an image of it. So then I'll just go with that and I'll just try to find like that specific action figure. To me, a good example of that is the Marvel Legends Colossus. Um, that's like the perfect figure to me. It's the one that I like and I, that I have and I have no desire to like get other Colossus figures that may or may not come out or be, be out there. But the two that I had struggled with for the longest time um, were Spawn and Batman. I felt like neither of them had a figure that really to me like encapsulated what I liked about the character. Um, Superman, I had a similar problem because my favorite Superman design is from Frank Miller's Dark Knight Rises or Dark Knight Returns. And um, I felt like that was the type of figure I wanted. So eventually I got the McFarlane Toys one and that's the perfect Superman for me. It's exactly what I look for in that design. But Batman, I didn't really like from that Frank Miller stuff. And uh, same with Spawn. I couldn't find a good Spawn figure, which is very surprising because McFarlane Toys obviously makes a million versions, but I just, I could not find what it was. Um, and eventually, coincidentally, because I love Batman Spawn so much, the two figures that fulfilled my desire for both of these characters were in a Batman Spawn crossover pack. So this is Batman. Um, this figure is one that I really, really like. It's a great suit design. I prefer a black suit for Batman. Um, that's just a, a personal taste thing. I know the blue suit looks great, uh, but that's never really been my style of Batman, which is interesting considering the fact that my first Batman comics ever were with a blue suit. Uh, that's talking about Marv Wolfman's era in the mid 400s. Um, that was my original Batman, but uh, you know, I just, I prefer a black suit. I think there's something about the being vengeance in the night that just works well. And then of course Spawn, and this is the Batman Spawn two pack and, and something that I really, really like. Uh, this Spawn is perfect for me. It also, you, it, it's hard to tell on camera here, but it stands up completely independently, which is pretty critical for me. Um, as somebody who likes to, dis to display, you know, I have action figures all over the place and it's important to me that a figure can stand up on its own. The Batman uh, does not really stand up on its own. It's very difficult to get it to stand up. It often wobbles, but you can put the, the foot plate that comes with a lot of McFarlane Toys figures in there and then you're fine. Digging a little further into the Spawn catalog, something that is in a Venn diagram with the Fantastic Four 
is a movie tie-in covers with an all-black background and some floating heads. This, of course, is in reference to this issue. This is the Spawn movie crossover book. This is a reprint of Spawn issue one. Um, it's hilarious that this exists. I love the Spawn movie. Uh, for all the reasons you're supposed to love a movie like that, I mean, it's almost unwatchable. The uh, effects are pretty fantastic in parts, and then they're they're truly, like, devastatingly ugly in a lot of other parts, which is hilarious to me. I, as a fan, like, I think that's really fantastic. Um, I like this movie crossover cover a lot. I think it's really funny and cool. And it, to me, the funniest thing about this is the Spawn outfit itself in the movie looks great. The effects on it are really good. Like they hold, I think they hold up today most of the way through that movie. Um, and on the cover of this, it looks fantastic. And then like the rest of the movie, the all the effects of the rest of the movie, except for like the makeup on maybe Violator and some other things is, uh, is really, really, really bad. So hilarious that this exists. Uh, great to have uh, John Leguizmo on the cover of a comic book dressed as a clown. I just think that's really funny. So yeah, love this issue. And it's a very fun piece of Spawn history. Like I, I feel like people don't uh, talk about the movie enough in relation to the character. I mean, you, you hear references whenever Todd brings up the fact that he's trying to get a new movie made. A lot of people will talk about the old movie and how, mo how much it sucks and how bad it is. But uh, I tend to disagree. I think it's a very fun thing to watch. You might need to be under the influence of something to watch it and have a really good time. But I think you can watch it stone cold sober and have a really great experience. So when it comes to the actual main Spawn storyline, uh, the main Spawn run that's been going, that's at, you know, 350 issues or whatever right now. Uh, this is the only issues that I have. This is a pretty small stack. You you can see here there's not that many um, and that is by choice that is something that I have stopped collecting I'm not really interested in it there's one that's on my wish list um, and of course that's spawn 100 with the cover up by Alex Ross but that's just because anything Alex Ross does I will show up for and buy a hundred copies of um, th that man can do no wrong he's never made a bad piece of art in his life so I will look for a copy of spawn 100 but other than that I'm done collecting I had a very specific art-based and, and vibe-based wish list for Spawn, and I completed it. So we'll very quickly go through these because these are some of the least interesting stuff in the Spawn collection. But obviously you have your Spawn one. This copy is, is pretty beat to hell, and I'm very proud of that. I like to have a beater kind of dollar bin copy of this. Uh, a few of these are from dollar bins. I like this, and then you've got your Commando Spawn here. This still has the $2 price sticker on it, so you can tell I overpaid for this. Um, under that, we have Spawn 8, which, of course, I bought because it homages Spider-Man 1 by Todd McFarlane. Um, if there's anything Todd can do well, it's an homage. And right here, it says McFarlane after me, which is very fun and funny. And, and yeah, I just think that's kind of that's kind of my sense of humor. That's my interest in comic books. Of course, you have issue 10, the Cerebus crossover. Uh, interesting issue, historic issue. I really would like eventually to get, um, I, I guess I should have clarified that because I, I said an incorrect thing then a minute ago that there was none in my uh, in my wish list but I believe there's a reprinting of this issue that has the hands coming out of the jail cells and it's the hands of every famous superhero from both major publishers um, I believe they reprinted this issue 10 with that. I'm not sure, but I, th I think that exists. And if it does, I really would like a copy of that because I, th I think that's a really fantastic, compelling image, even though it is a little bit like uh, fake, deep, like it's not a, an image that's incredibly nuanced. It's just Todd kind of like trying to make a point. I still think it's fun. Uh, this is Spawn 12. I like this a lot. I really tend to gravitate towards art that is simple and, and clean and, uh, and interesting in that way. So this is that. Next up is Spawn 13. Just thought this was a cool cover. Uh, it's very weird. This is one of those ones that like on first glance looks like a normal cover. And then you see like the repeating floating skulls here and the face and kind of, it, it's a very avant-garde cover in the Spawn world, I think, which I, which is interesting. Um, after that, we have Spawn 21. This is probably my favorite Spawn cover, uh, uh, at least of the original, whatever, 100 issues or so. Um, I think this is a really fantastic image and it's a fun reminder that like Spawn is, at, at least to me, like a primarily aesthetic book. It's something that you buy because it looks like it's time. It looks like that era in comic books. Um, and because I like Todd McFarlane's art so much, this is a really great display piece for that. 
24, all those same thoughts apply here. Um, this is just a fun, interesting cover. I do wish it was just clean white here in the background. I've always kind of wished that was the case. Um, and he's uh, honestly, he's, or, uh, you know, he's, he's somewhat homaging himself here with the circular motif. Obviously, no numbers behind it. And he's done that many other times. Uh, but this is somewhat, I guess, of a, a Amazing Spider-Man 300, this, this cover here. Uh, it evokes some of that same imagery. And then this is 60. Uh, I actually don't care about this issue at all. Uh, this is heavily water damaged, and I got it out of a 25 cent bin somewhere in Kentucky a couple years ago. And to me, it was fun to get for two reasons. Uh, one, uh, 25 cent bin spawn from like past like issue 50 on is you don't see that often uh, so it's very water damage that's obviously why it was there but also it's a Capullo cover and Greg Capullo you know much like Todd I think is a really fantastic artist and somebody that I like a lot and so it's yeah it's cool to have uh, just something he did and those aren't incredibly difficult to find you know Greg Capullo is the reason that spawn uh, exists today for all the time that Todd spends kind of setting himself up as the savior of independent comic books and saying like I, uh, you know, Todd saying that he kept Spawn going all those years. It's like, it's really Greg Capullo that did that. Without Greg, we really don't have all those years of Spawn that get him to the upper 300s where he can become the longest running independent book. I mentioned Virgin Variants earlier. Uh, I want to talk about Spawn Unwanted Violence. This is not a Virgin Variant. This is issue two. However, uh, the Del Mundo Virgin variant of issue one is right here. So this, to me, uh, does one of the things that I love the most about Spawn. I, I like this cover. I think this is a, a compelling and interesting image. But specifically, this cover for issue one, the Virgin variant, um, does something with Spawn that I think is very important. It's the same thing that happens with this Batman Spawn cover, which is it takes Spawn out of his art style. It takes him completely distant from that 90s, fine line work, Jim Lee, you know, Batman hush kind of style, um, Rob Liefeld adjacent style. And it puts him in a very different thing. It's like a pop art modern thing. And there's, it's just a different medium. He looks different. He looks cool, but it is very different. To me, the strength of a good character comes in whether or not they can be adapted to a different art style and still have some of the gravity. And that's why the Silver Surfer has always been one of my favorite characters because I feel like every artist gets to do something with the Silver Surfer because he's very iconic and simple and they get to add something to it. So you obviously have like Straczynski's Silver Surfer Requiem and a whole bunch of other work like that that takes the surfer and puts him in this like beautiful art style. Um, Alex Ross has painted the surfer a number of times and it's always wonderful. And then also you have Ron Lim's work that's like very very uh, comic booky, right? It feels almost post Kirby, bright, colorful comic book. And uh, I think Spawn survives really well on the strength of people doing new and interesting things with the art style of the character. So I like Unwanted Violence for that reason. And while it does seem like Todd keeps a pretty firm grip on like the main Spawn storyline that he's, he's always wanting to be involved to some capacity in that, it's always cool when something else that uses that character that's not like Gunslinger or Medieval Spawn, it's not a side character, it's actually Spawn himself gets the chance to be in a new medium. Now we're gonna talk about something that annoys me a little bit about Spawn. Um, and that's variant covers. Now I know I just showed you a pile of Batman Spawn variant covers, and I'm about to show you another pile of covers, but I'm gonna talk about something very specific about the variant covers and the reason that I have this pile, okay? This is the King Spawn pile, okay? And as you can see, it's got a decent amount in that pile. That's a pretty, that's a pretty uh, sizable stack. The point I want to make here is that when this came out, and this you can see this right on the front cover, it was $6 for issue one of King Spawn. $6, okay? So this is a slightly larger than usual issue. This is an issue that has a little bit more pages, I guess, if you want to get technical, than most mainstream comic releases. But it is not, I, I as an objective judge of comic book quality, it is not a $6 issue. We are not dealing with $6 of value dealing with at most like four dollars of value i know that's subjective but i've been buying comic books a long time i have seen the price increases from when i was a kid to now and that's obviously a microcosm of their growth over time there's just no way that six dollars is justified for all these so the way that i bought all these <laughs> is when king spawn one came out i bought this this is the a cover i bought this for six dollars when it first came out this was the only one i owned until like three months ago and then at a Comic-Con in Michigan, at Great Lakes Comic-Con, I was in a dollar bin and it was like buy 10, get two free or something. Like there was a quantity discount in the dollar bin 
just always the best. That always means I'm gonna gonna spend some time. And I found all the rest of these in the dollar bin. So I paid about the same for this entire stack as you would spend on two of these, uh, which to me, right, speaks for itself. That's ludicrous. This is two, three years old, and we're already to the point where you you can buy them for absolutely nothing. So them being printed for six dollars sold for six dollars i think is a little bit ridiculous um let's look at the art though because i do think king spawn has some really cool artwork i love this cover very liminal very you know all this dark space around here it doesn't show up great on camera but it reminds me of like a jim starlin's breed issue one or something like that um i just like iconic simple covers like that then obviously we've got another one here um this is the finch cover this is really cool that's a very yeah it's a neat design kind of sit, standing on this gargoyle here very cool uh i've got another one here who's the artist on this okay this is another todd one i was gonna say i think this is a todd cover but yeah this is a this is a todd cover i like this a lot i like the bright cape um i think todd when he takes his time with a drawing with a cover when he really soaks what looks like more time into this than than usual you can get some really beautiful stuff which is cool uh, this is a Kate's cover, Donny Kate's cover. If you know Donny Kate's, maybe from Hulk, maybe from some of his other work, you know that like his stuff is so iconic and interesting and uh, has a, a cartoonish aspect to it and some of the textures and line work that he uses that I think makes it feel so like uh, comic, I don't want to say comic accurate because it is a comic book, right? But it feels like such a love letter to comic book art. And I really like that about this. Um, this is the Sean Gordon Murphy cover. Um, I like this one a lot. It's cool to see some Commando Spawn representation in there. Obviously, they love to have Spawn pull out a giant gun at any opportunity in the book. And so that's always neat uh, to see it done in a different art style. And then one last Todd cover inked by somebody else. Um, a lot of these Todd covers were inked by other people, which I think is a fun and interesting style flavor thing to add in there, which is cool. Um, and I like this. This feels a little bit more melancholy. This feels, you know, it's Todd sitting on, uh, it's Todd sitting on the throne. It's Spawn sitting on the throne, uh, plays into that King Spawn kind of metaphor, adds a little bit of humanity to him. And it's just a, it's just a kick-ass cover. It's just cool. So I like these. I like them for, for $1. You know, that's the extent to which I like them. I don't like them as $6 books and I won't buy them at $6. Um, to buy a bunch of variants. I, I'm always, you know, not always, but in many cases, if I really like a character, I'm very willing to buy variants, right? Like Moon Knight is a good example of this, that for a long stretch, they were doing two, three variants uh, throughout the entire recent run of Moon Knight. And I think they still are. I haven't bought it in a while, but... Um, I was buying them every once in a while when I liked how they looked I would buy them and it's because they were the price of a normal comic book right they were they were two three maybe four bucks and if it's three bucks it's like I'm I'm way more willing to do that but you double that and suddenly it's like I'm if I'm making the decision week by week to like uh, should I get this it's double the price of a comic book it's just it's just not worth it and I don't see the appeal so King Spawn I do like it just not for that price I've got two more books for us to look at uh, before I let you go. The first one is when I talk about schlock and I talk about like stuff being kind of hack work uh, that is not critically well received. It's not viewed as like a really positive addition to the comics landscape. Uh, nothing pops out to me more than this series, which I think is a part of a fantastic era of comics history where Todd would kind of draw anything uh, and allow his characters to be used a little bit more loosely. And Alan Moore would write anything. Uh, especially for Image, you know, he was given a lot more room at that time to experiment. Obviously, his work on Supreme is very well-renowned, and I think that it's very fun and interesting. And he, he wrote some early Spawn issues, or at least one. Um, and so this is Spawn Wildcats issue four. This is probably the, the bulkiest looking Spawn you've ever seen. Um, a pretty hilarious image of the character, um, a very funny kind of time period where Alan Moore could write a Spawn Wildcats crossover and this was the cover. This cover has been homaged recently by a number of other comic creators. I, I, I do not remember it off the top of my head, which is frustrating, but I have seen at least one homage of this cover, uh, which to me is hilarious. It kind of feels like the the cycle has looped all the way around and we're now, you know, homaging like some of the, the junkiest kind of low effort covers and the proportions on this are absolutely insane. 
Um, Scott Clark was working on this book, and and I'm sure, right? There's there's an element to which, at the time, getting to draw something Alan Moore wrote is just like automatically the greatest experience of your life. So anything that comes out of it feels even more amazing than it looks. Um, and and the thing is, when I talk about this being schlocky or the proportions being bad or like all those things, I want to project that like I enjoy it a lot. I think it's really fun and really cool, and I think that like when we get caught up in wanting to pedestal people who have like anatomically incredible artwork or like, or, or as I often do, right. Pedestal like an Alex Ross, uh, or an Asad Ribic or, you know, any of those characters or those, or those, uh, creators, <laughs> um, we get into this dangerous territory where we're putting all these blocks on art and saying like, you can only be a good comic creator if you're in this exact lane. And I don't like that. It's not my vibe. That's not what I'm interested in doing. Um, I think it is fun when you can point out that a piece of artwork uh, is really not like considered classically or historically right, like accurate or very good, but it has energy. It has so much like power to it. And that's what I like about this cover is like, this is an imposing spawn. This is a buff spawn. And I think that's fun. And the costume has never looked like this again and probably never will. And there's all these weird details about it. He has a giant, you know, dragon snake face coming out of his crotch in the middle and it's ridiculous, but I like it. So um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. The final book is actually not incredibly spawn specific, but it is the 1999 McFarland Toys catalog. Uh, this is hilarious uh, to me, not only because 1999 is the year I was born, but also like you get this very, very odd cross section of culture at the time, which is the intersection of McFarland Toys, which of course prioritizes image comics creations, uh, but then also what was happening in pop culture with the licenses that they could secure. So Austin Powers is on here, and there's a bunch of stuff from the Spawn movie. You have Halloween, you have Ringo Starr, you have Gene Simmons from Kiss. There's just an odd cross section of the the licenses they were able to secure at the time, and the way that Todd chose to promote those and put those on the cover of this. And so I have always found this really fascinating and interesting, and it's fun to look through. Let's we'll take a look through here in the in the pages. So this is a fun read. Uh, you've got Curse of the Spawn and a lot of stuff that was being released specifically for Spawn, Spawn Dark Ages. So you'd have Medieval Spawn in here and. Uh, a lot of other characters. And then as we get through the Spawn stuff, you can get to like Movie Maniac, so Ghostface, Pumpkinhead, Chucky and his Bride, Mike Myers, you know, The Crow, all that stuff. Uh, and that's what's interesting, right, is a lot of this stuff has to do with Spawn, even though he's not on the cover. But this is that the only time in the world, right, where Spawn was at the level of cultural relevance that a lot of these like horror movie villains were. They were as popular at the time. Spawn was selling quite literally millions of copies. Um, this is a fun one. I have this somewhere in the collection. I like that cover a lot. And then, yeah, we have Kiss, who, you know, have gone on to have a very business uh, beneficial arrangement with Todd over the years. They've done comic books, they've done action figures, they've done all kinds of stuff. I'm pretty sure Todd has directed a music video for them, although I know he's done some work with Ozzy Osbourne, maybe that's who I'm thinking of. But uh, there's just a lot in there that's been a good relationship over the years. This is Ozzy, obviously, and so it's cool that uh, Ozzy Osbourne has, has got some stuff in, in 1999. They were already working together. And then, of course, you've got your Beatles Yellow Submarine uh, with with a very stylized and yet still uh, kind of junky-looking Paul McCartney action figure. I think this stuff is really funny and would love to get some of these figures eventually, but they're, they're getting more and more and more expensive as time goes on. Um, you've got Pearl Jam in the back here. We've got a lot of this stuff. So it, it's just, it's an interesting cross section of culture in 1999. Oh, the Sin, okay, I didn't know this was in here. This is fun. The Sin City figurines. So the movie, I don't believe the movie had come out yet or it was about to. Let me look. Yeah, so it doesn't look like this is a reference. This is a Sin City Marv action figure. And as far as I can tell from reading this blurb here, it does not look like that's from the movie. The movie had not come out yet. It's 99, so the movie hadn't, hadn't come out, I guess. Um, but it's interesting that they were already starting to dip into making figures out of other notable works from different creators that weren't necessarily Image. This is from Diamond Comics. Um, so you have Sidney Savage and Major Maxim and all these, you know, obviously very beloved, well-renowned characters. Uh, but yeah, so it's just, a, it's just a fun time to have a catalog like this and have it be from the year I was born and just have all these interesting action figures and releases from that time. That is about it for me today. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'm always down to talk Spawn for any reason. So drop a comment if you're interested in hearing more about this stuff. And, you know, I would love to chat with you and kind of get your opinions on it. Obviously, Spawn's, a, I think, a bit of a polarizing figure, but somebody that I, I like a lot uh, from an artistic perspective. 
And I can hope and pray one day we'll eventually get a movie deserving of his presence, even if I, realistically I don't think that's going to happen. Um, we'll have to settle for the 97 movie, which I love. You know, I think it's a, I think it's a great movie for exactly what it is. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.